extraordinary privilege of taking care of uh, Mrs. Jean Dana, um, Mr. Dana's wife and the mother of the uh, Lou Dana and all the Danas who are putting on the tournament. Uh, and there are patients who you never forget, and Mrs. Jean Dana was one of them. She was just the most wonderful woman, and despite suffering from this terrible disease, multiple system atrophy, she would always be extremely positive. Uh, she'd always be cheerful and, and uh, friendly and always asking about others. Uh, and she was always extremely optimistic and believed that at some point there would be a cure for her problems. And I think that all of this that has happened with the Dana family is a reflection of her really wonderful, wonderful spirit. And when we're at the tournament, we really feel her there uh, every minute of the tournament. And I, I, it was just a wonderful opportunity to get to know her. It's just been so much fun and so rewarding for me and for Dr. Lowe and the others uh, from Mayo to participate in the uh, Jean Dana Memorial Tournament for many years. Uh, our point of pride is we have never finished last, although it's been quite close, and uh, we work hard every year to get ready to maintain that record. Uh, but uh, the real fun is to see the Dana family and their spirit at work, uh, their incredible teamwork. Um, the tournament is just supremely run, uh, and you can see that everybody there is there for a common purpose, and the purpose of conquering uh, multiple system atrophy. Uh, and every year it gets to be a bigger and bigger event, and we just really congratulate and thank the Danas uh, for all of their efforts. Uh, and it is very rewarding now to see the fruits of those efforts in Dr. Lowe's research. Uh, just this year, we're now able to refer patients with multiple system atrophy for a treatment trial, uh, such a giant step that Dr. Lowe is taking with his team. Uh, and the Dana family can be very proud of that and we thank them so much for their support. I'm uh, Philip Lowe, and I head uh, a program project on multiple system atrophy uh, funded by the National Institute of Health. The focus of the program project is on the um, diagnosis and treatment of multiple system atrophy. Um, what we've done is um, to have a multi-pronged and multi-site approach to uh, unraveling this condition. We have a project uh, cited at uh, University of California, San Diego, headed by Dr. Maslier, which uh, focuses on uh, understanding the molecular mechanism of multiple system atrophy. He actually has a model that uh, um, has all the key aspects of the human disease, including the behavioral aspects, and uh, has been in the process of uh, recognizing what causes it and then finding treatments that uh, might be efficacious in humans. That has led to the second study, which I had um, at Mayo on a treatment trial on multiple system atrophy. Uh, I think for the first time we have a treatment trial that's very credible, uh, that uh, stands some chance of uh, improving patients with multiple system atrophy. This is a double-blind placebo-controlled study of rifampicin in multiple system atrophy. Uh, the basis of the study is that the uh, Disorder of MSA is due to an abnormal protein which clumps and the clumping causes uh, damage to key neurons. Um, and uh, this uh, drug will stop the clumping of these uh, proteins. The study has already started and uh, we hope to get that completed within two years. Um, a third study uh, is also done here looking at novel approaches to treating one of the major symptoms uh, of multiple system atrophy and that's the orthostatic hypotension or drop in blood pressure when you stand up. Um, so we, we are working on that and another study is on um, 
understanding the natural history of multiple system atrophy. So we are the second um, site. The third site is uh, at the University of uh, Michigan, uh, Ann Arbor, uh, headed there by Dr. Uh, Sid Gilman. So together we, um, we have an approach that I think is, uh, is quite promising. Um, I wanted to spend a word on the Rifampicin study itself. Um, like many phase three treatments, uh, treatment trials, they are very uh, demanding, they're very extensive. We plan to study 100 patients who will be treated for one year. Uh, typically, when these studies are done by industry, uh, we are looking at a budget of two to ten million. Um, in this case, we have had some help from National Institute of Health, but um, uh, as an indication of, of difficulties, some of the sites are actually doing studies for us below cost. And the only reason they're doing it is because it's such a uh, terrible disorder where the prognosis without treatment has been uniformly fatal. Um, so we are very pleased with the way we are progressing and um, we um, expect to continue to be successful. Uh, we've been very fortunate um, in terms of our interactions with the Dana family. The interactions have been not only highly positive, it also has been pleasurable. Um, the annual golf tournament um, has been very successful, and not only in terms of uh, fundraising, but also in terms of our interactions. And it is pleasing to see the um, amount of support that we continue to have from the Dana family and the friends. Um, in fact, the only complaint I've received has been from Dr. Matsumoto, who says that before every game there, he has to take coaching lessons, which are very expensive. Um, and in terms of uh, the Mayo interactions with the study, uh, we've been very fortunate. The only, the only way this study is possible uh, is because of the unique patient resources that we have. Um, just to illustrate, the Rifampicin study is now ongoing, and the amount of patients recruited from the Mayo site is more than all the other sites put together. And that's only possible because of the type of patients that we have and also the unique um, uh, physician and allied health uh, resources that we have that allows us to function very effectively. We work in close collaboration and the, and the high standards uh, enable us to do all these things.